Animal gods be damned. All right, I think it's going to play an ad real quick, so I'm going to hang back. Smart dogs. You are not. Oh, you are not one. Hey, Zeuser. All right, we got an ad playing. We've got, uh, what is this? Windows malware going on. And okay. I'm going to go over here. Right there. Oh, God, did I take my phone number out of this? <laughs> oh, no, dude. Please don't tell me my phone number is in this one. It's not, right? Oh, Adam, I'm going to laugh. All right, cool. <laughs> like, please don't tell me. Opsec failure number 55,000. All right, and we're back. So, hi, I'm Ryan, and that's Adam. Hi. And that's Zeus. Who you can't see he's, he's a dog this is a dog all right so two weeks ago i streamed a workshop cfp proposal for defcon 27 no i, I totally did <laughs> the, the, the geek diary right? last time two weeks ago i did a proposal for a workshop and i was showing previous cfps so i was like i shared a folder from my actual host and i was all clicking on these files and i'm like look and I'm scrolling up and down, and it's like email address, phone number. <laughs> it was so stupid. It was fantastic. Oh, goodness. All right. So what we're going to do is submit another DEF CON workshop proposal. This time, we're going to be doing one for a workshop on analyzing shell code. So we have over here documents, workshop CFPs. We're going to open this with Notepad++. Get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay. So here's the text file that I used for my initial workshop CFP. I'm still editing the video. I'm still trying to get rid of my name and email address because <laughs> I'm so stupid. Operations or operational security failure, big time. So anywho, this time we have it all X'd out. Hey, look at that. So in the previous video and Folks who didn't see it live will see it later because I need to continue editing all my damn info out of it because I'm a genius. Anywho, I went on like I went into what a CFP is and why they're important and things of that nature. For this one, I'm just gonna get right into it. So essentially, you go to defcon.org. Oh, you know what? I didn't change the damn name on my channel, Adam. I know. I'm not a good I'm just not a good person. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if I can change it live. Submitting a DEF CON 27 CFP do update. Hopefully that takes. Boop. Let's see. Nope. So it says fundamental. Oh, maybe I got an F5. A little F5 action. Nope. Nope. All right. Yeah, whatever. Hey, he says he can do it. Geek Diver does a lot of... Hi, by the way. I'm Ryan. <laughs> I've watched your videos. Oh, I made an internet friend. Oh, internet friends. All right, so anyway. DEF CON, biggest hacker conference, blah, blah, blah. So we have a call for workshops, which closes on the 1st, which is coming up very shortly here. And if I click on call for workshops, which I could swear I've already done, we're waiting. There it is. So this call for workshops, and again, I, I went into all this in my previous video. Talks about sign-up costs and yada, yada, yada. But down here is the, hey, submit a text file only. Because don't, they don't want weaponized files, obviously. And PDF like pops up with an alert box and it's like, hey, you have to accept my paper or you're going to be ransomware encrypted. <laughs> <laughs> and then really do it? Oh. All right, so I've basically grabbed all the information from the call for presenters or call for papers site and I've dropped it into a text file I recently filled out one so I'm just going to be editing that one and so here we go submission info primary trainer name that's me that's the guy Ryan hey company mm, NA for now I'm not sure if this is work approved so day job is left out of it for, for right now additional trainer information NA I will probably have some room proctors maybe this little fellow over here uh -huh. To help out folks who may get stuck as we go through, 
depending on how many people they have signed up, if they get like 20, 40, 100, you know, it depends. You may need additional proctors. So have you taught this specific workshop before? No, I just came up with it uh, like now as we do this. Ooh, we're out of whiskey. That's dumb. Isn't that dumb? Did he leave the bottle? I don't know. That's rude. Do you want me to start? Yeah. No, we got it. That's how rude. He just left. All right. In the previous stream we just did, we had a buddy of mine popped in. He was like, hey, have some 12 year whiskey. And we're like, okay, <laughs> sure. All right. So, brand new workshop idea. Although I've trained the concepts at day job many times, five week curriculum. Yeah. So, I did a five week curriculum at day job and we go over a bunch of stuff. One of the weeks is reverse engineering. We don't really go over shell code, we go over using a debugger a little bit, but we keep it at a little bit because it's not really intro or even advanced. Security Operations Center training, uh, but I have done, in general, quite a bit of shellcode training. So they ask for previous workshop stuff, and here I have listed three of them. Network Forensics Workshop, Package Pillaging Done Right, Packet Pillaging, Network Forensics Workshop Do, and then Exploit Kit Shenanigans, they're cheeky. So here's where I went over some shellcode back in 2015 at B-Sides Las Vegas. And I guess I'll just leave those for now. Um, I do want to, however, put a quick note here. Quick note, this is a second, mm, this is my second submission for a DEF CON workshop. My prior submission was for no whiskey. carrier file, what? No whiskey. No whiskey? No whiskey. Oh, that's stupid. All right, see the bookshelf right there? My wife's not gonna watch this, we're good. See the bookshelf? I do see the, the second row down right there? See, behind the Wheel of Time? There says the Wheel of Time Companion, yeah, pull that out. There's a companion, it's a companion, huh? It is a companion. <laughs> pull that out, and then, and then there's whiskey back there. <laughs> is, it, is it the book? No, behind it, come on, what are you doing? Adam, come on, Adam. It's the important things in life. All right, submission was for a carrier file maldoc uh, analysis workshop. I'm submitting, you found it, an alternate workshop. Obviously only one, obviously I would only expect, okay, expect, hopefully, damn it, dude. Hopefully, huh? Yeah. You already can't type. Yeah, all right, shut up, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tinked it, bing. Every time you tink it, you gotta bing it. So again, uh, this is Adam back here. Well, this is Knob Creek. So Adam and I have been friends for what, 30 years now? Something like that. Uh, something like that. Um, 32, 33, I don't know. Kindergarten, we're, we're dating ourselves here. Here you go. Yeah, Zeus is like, dude, give me some of that. What's up, buddy? All right, so I'm just putting a note to the CFP board that I'm submitting a second workshop and obviously I don't expect like, oh, they're gonna take two, like I'm so damn special. But, uh, that'd be awesome if they took two, my goodness. All right, this is my second submission for a DEF CON workshop. Prior submission was for a carrier file maldoc analysis workshop. Submitting an alternate work, use the word workshop again. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Boop. Obviously, I would only expect, hopefully, one to be accepted. Blah, blah. All right, this is a brand new workshop idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. How many instructors will there be? One, this guy. However, I'd like to pull in some room proctors. I've done this before for my workshops. Yeah, so I, I like to do, I like to talk, if you haven't already noticed. And when I do talks, I pull in room proctors just for a regular talk, or especially for any type of hands-on event. Excuse me, so they can walk anyone through something that may you know be stuck or something like that as we're trying to keep the flow of the training going. So yeah, pretty much that's from the old one, we're good. Uh, scheduling and special needs, specific time of day, no. Good to go. DEF CON will provide one whiteboard and screen projector. Nope. All good. That's that's pretty much what I need. Um, I will be providing, if this workshop gets accepted, I'll be providing USB 3.0 drives with Remnux and a Windows VM. Hopefully I'll have information for folks to get that all set up prior, but a lot of times people show up without any prep work, so I'll have a, a fast drive for them to hopefully get things going. So, presentation info. 
limit your class size. I'm comfortable with presenting this workshop to as many people as who would like to attend. Step-by-step -step instructions. So one of the big things about doing a workshop for a conference is not just getting up in front of the room and being like, ah, hey, do this and then do that and then do this. You're going to have all kinds of different scenarios. Some people are going to be able to be there for half of it and then they got to go. And if they go and you don't have anything for them to follow outside the immediate class, we're well, not going to have anything to do. On top of that, depending on how advanced, for example, the content is, you may have some folks who are like, well, I already, I already know this stuff. So if they know steps one through 20 and they're bored, they don't want to sit there and be bored by you, especially when you're at a conference that's very large and has all kinds of other really cool things to do. So what they're going to want to do is kind of jump ahead. And if you have step-by-step -step instructions for them to do so, they're going to be very glad and they're going to jump ahead. So an example of a previous workshop I gave, um, let's go with one of the network forensic workshops. Here's a PDF file for the bad boy and scroll down, scroll down. So in this workshop that I gave at, what was this one? Uh, Cactus Con 16, 2016, I believe. I gave step by step by step by step by step, step by step, do, 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 do. Instructions, all right, this is the boring stuff, hold on. There we go. So all this stuff, commands to run, exactly what to expect from your output. Um, this, however, does take your development time and take it from like, oh, I'll do these things to like a ridiculous number of hours to put this all together. So you print this thing out and it's just like tons of content and it takes a lot of time to do it, but it provides a much more thorough and professional workshop. And speaking of professional, you shouldn't curse because that's fucking rude. And someone hit me up today. They're like, hey, I don't know about your language on your stream. And I was like, oh, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> fucking turn it off, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyways, that's enough of that. All right. So can your class be taught in under four hours if requested? So the class we're going to put together right now is going to talk about, well, here, let's let's start it off. Um, let's do save a new file, call it, give me your booger, notes. And we're going to be like, uh, so coming up very shortly, they're going to ask for a larger outline. And in this case, I'm coming up with that right now. So uh, what is shellcode? Where might one find shellcode? Uh, where did the term originate? And we'll call this section all about shellcodes or something silly like that. And then we're going to talk about um, quick triage, SCBDB, scdbg dot exe. Let's call it SDBG. And then manual analysis, uh, converting sh converting raw shellcode to a PE. Actually, before that, reviewing raw shellcode example given dot bin file and IDA. So IDA can take just shellcode, like a little binary blob, as I like to call them. And it will parse it and be like, oh, it's, do it's doing this stuff. Um, if you don't use the debugger and the shellcode, which most shellcode does, actually does like, a, you know, deobfuscates itself, but XORs itself or rolls or shifts or all the above, then IDA, without using the debugger, is just going to be like, oh, it's there's a couple instructions and it's all crap. But if, as you start to run it, you know, you, it decodes itself. But however, we're going to be converting to a PE so that we can debug it properly. And then debugging properly in... Let's just say debugging properly and go with uh, x64, oh, actually 32 dbg. Uh, do I have it on the desktop here? I don't have it yet. That's weird. Uh, x32. Really? That's weird. All right, well, let's grab it real quick. I'm going to need it. x64 dbg. Click. So, little. And I'll give some like kind of background stuff too in the workshop is um, one of the more common debuggers that folks are doing these days are using is x64 slash x32 dbg. But back in the day, I used to use immunity debugger a lot. And immunity debugger 
was simply a branch of the original debugger that everyone used, which was Ollie Debug. So I guess we'll do a little history lesson uh, da, 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 back over here. Uh, debugger review, Ollie, DBG, immunity. It's basically Ollie plus Python API. And then now we have x64 slash x32 DBG. Jeep, oh, I'm gonna talk about that. Uh, I'm talking about Ida and then using a debugger and hold off on that for a moment. All right, so going back over here before I flesh this out too much, can it be taught in under four hours? So I'm just giving myself like, a, you know, kind of a heads up on what are we going to be covering in here? And since we're making it up right now, <laughs> can it be done in four in less than four hours? No, I guess I should spell things correctly. Whatever. Tridge. Tridge. Quick triage. So what are you doing? You recording stuff? Well, you can't record this is a private conversation. No, no, no. <laughs> this stream is a private conversation, bro. <laughs> hey, Saf almost says something. Good luck not doxing yourself next. Oh, you're leaving? Whatever. Bye. All right, well, I'll see you Monday. We have a lunch thing going on. Oh, that's not cut. All right. I do. Did he lose some ice cubes? I don't know. He's got his. He came with fancy whiskey and ice, and was like, "Hey." Then when the fuck did I become your bartender? Um, since I've known you for thirty-two years. What? Come on, bro. <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, shut up. <laughs> All right. So, can it be done in less than four hours? Mm, I don't think so. Um, cannot be taught in less than four hours. So the previous one was about doc analysis. Um. However, if we cut out all the history behind the debuggers we'll be using, assume folks know how to use a debugger, and ignore the source is of our shellcode, we could do the course in half the time. However, this would change the difficulty level from intermediate to advanced. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to be going over, like, where do you get shellcode? Like, where does that come from? You know, you have a, a maldoc, a doc file, using OLE tools, OLE VBA, deobfuscate the VBA, and you find the Unicode encoded shellcode, right? Well, how do you decode that? And how do you make it? Hex. Hi. No. Oh, it's in the freezer in the bottom. All the way on the left, it's in the box. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we ignore all that and we're just like, hey, here's shell code and go. But that would that would change the overall workshop quite a bit. So how long do you think you need for your workshop? Four hours would be great. Um, overview of shell code, or I guess rephrase that. That's the phrasing sucks. Shell code overview, and actually I need to save this for a little bit later. Hold on, I gotta come back to this. Um, buffer and potty breaks. I'll come back to that. Um, previous workshop I submitted was understanding and analyzing weaponized carrier files. This one will be something a little more attuned to dealing with shell code. So let's go like something stupid down the rabbit hole. Uh, understanding, no, debugging and understanding shell code. That's a working title. Do I have any watchers right now? Oh, hey, there's some people here. Hi. Hey, say hi in the chat, damn it. All right, so that is a working title. Down the rabbit hole, debugging and understanding shell code. Down the rabbit hole. That sounds kind of douchey. That's right. It's a working title. If anyone has any better ideas, throw them out. So, um, yeah, we'll come back to how long we're going to need because I really have to flesh this out. In fact, let's just do, let's just get on to this. Uh, all about shell codes, AKA shell code overview. 
What is shell code? Where did the term originate? My man. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. It's really freezing burn. <laughs> it looks so stupid. Oh, well, I got a bunch of it off. Of I like how professional that is. Look, Look it's, it's a really nice whiskey cube, but it's all freezer burned. By the way, the rest of them are getting that shit. Are they? Oh, or maybe I should just drink more whiskey. There we go. Now it looks a little prettier. Yeah, I've had these for a while. Whatever. Okay. Uh, where did the term originate? So, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, push code to IP to pop a shell. Term has moved. Shell shocked. There might be something there, right? Eh? Oh, hey, that's not bad. Shell shocked. There might be something there, eh? I like the shell shocked. Oh, however, if we use the term shell shock, some people may confuse it with the vulnerability shell shock. Is that, what year was that? Just crazy. What year was shell shock? Shell shock software bug four years ago. I want to. I want to separate the two. I like that though. Hold on. Uh, the geek diver. Shell shocked. There might be something there. Eh? I like that idea. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're gonna still come back to that. So let's do this. Let's make notes. Review. Oop. What did I just do? All right. Review and review. All right. So I'll just grab that. I'm just control F that later and come back to that. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this guy. So we're forming a workshop for DEF CON. XXAR15 fan. Hey, are you who I think you are? Did we recently meet up for some Korean food? month or two ago. Is that you? By happenstance, technically. Okay, what is shell code? Where the term originate? Push code to IP to pop a shell. Term is... Term now used for entire string of instructions to get to the point of a shell. Includes ROP gadgets. Blah, blah. Where might one find shell code? Completely off base. Damn it. All right. <laughs> it's not it's not what I thought it was then. All right. Well, hi, anyway. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Maldoc analysis. Uh, EK landing page. Um, General CVE Association. Hey, what's a CVE? These are things you kind of expect, but you have to kind of just throw out there in. Quick triage. Um, push shell code to hex file. Review via SCDBG. Either directly or via PDF stream dumper. Oop, can't use that. Uh, useful when analyzing. What? What? There we go. PDF files. So weaponized PDF file. You're in PDF stream dumper. You go to the JavaScript UI, the secondary thing we were talking. Are oh, we here for that part? No. Okay. You go to the secondary UI, you start deobfuscating it, and all of a sudden you have percent encoded crap and all this type of stuff. So uh, recognizing, recognizing. Noodle Linux, so I'm just looking for any good sources on it. All right, cool. Uh, in here, we'll be using some cool... So, what I'm doing right now is I'm just giving an outline, and I'm kind of workshopping. Oh! I'm workshopping a workshop. How cute uh, is that? All right, so I'm brainstorming a workshop for DEF CON 27 to do shell code analysis. And I'm going to submit it along with this and be like, hey, you know, hey go over here. And I, I, I recorded three hours of me talking, and they're like, oh, wonderful. <laughs> but also, toward the end of this, I'm going to be... Our interspersed, whatever... I'll be talking about some of the Linux stuff and some of the Windows tools we'll be using like throughout and how to do some of these things. So for example, if I switch over, can I switch over quickly? Let's see. All right, here's Remnux. There you go. So shellcode to exe.py is a tool that, oh, by the way, I'm using 
a system. Ah, I hate this damn version. Hold on. Let's go with 24. Is that a bit much? Nah, that's cool. 24 works. 24 works. Uh, cat, Etsy, star, release star. We're, this is based on Ubuntu 14. It's a um, distribution referred to as Remnux. And you can find this bad boy over at... Go back to full screen. And da, 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 what am I in? Windows now? All right. You just go to remnux.org. And here you go. The Sans crew. Uh, let's see. Is it Lenny Zeltzer? And who else? Zeltzer? Is that how you pronounce his name? I don't know. Yeah, Lenny. I always pronounce, I've always pronounced it Zeltzer. Oh, here we go. That's the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Westcott and Lenny Zeltzer put together this Linux distribution. Um, it uses, I think it's, was it LXDE? Is that the name of the, the uh, windowing system? LXDE, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a lightweight X desktop environment, I believe is what that sounds for. It sounded, that sounded good, didn't it? That's not <laughs> what I just said. It sounded right. Yeah, so anyways, not as much overhead and, and uh, less processing power required, things like that. So anyways, we'll, we'll be going into some of those things, so hopefully you, you find that useful. Okay, quick triage, recognizing uh, URL encoded URL. Let's go with uh, UTF, et cetera. Encoded uh, shellcode, convert, converting between shellcode versions. So you have X, you've got uh, percent U, X, 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 et cetera. And there we go. All right. And all right. Do I keep flushing this out or go back to here for a moment? Uh, keep flushing this out. Debugger review. The days of old. That's douchey. All right. Um, <laughs> I guess debugger timeline and why we're choosing x32 debug so ollie debug and i'll go like this to immunity ollie fork with a python api to x64 slash 32 dbg we're going to use that also i had a free pro is great but expensive and ida free will analyze uh raw binary hex dumps and we can also talk about um, also creating a shellcode binary blob using Python and that's when you do a fucking open a file shellcode.b uh, I guess dot bin and you do it in a writing binary mode and then you write using slash x x notation and then push to file Ida can read these okay all right let's take a moment and go back over here and all right so prerequisites for students the previous version was based on a different workshop that I gave, which was over here. Was it EK workshop? I think it was. Yeah. So I gave an exploit kit workshop at B-Size Las Vegas 2015. And in here we talked about, I think it was the Fiesta and then also Angler, if I believe correctly. Yeah. And in here, one of the things you give folks is a heads up to, you know, a workshop are the skills that they will need along with the hardware and software requirements. So I know I'm scrolling a lot, but let's go back over here. So can I kick it? Yes, you can. Came from, oh, maybe it's a different one. Oh, here it is. Personal knowledge. All right, and this is gonna be very similar to this particular workshop that I gave because in this one, I was talking about like, if you're a programmer, like awesome. If you understand API calls, awesome. If you know a DLL, dynamic link library, or an SO, a shared object in uh, Nix-based environments, like, you know, awesome. I admit in the moment, it's going to be much of a hindrance if I want to try 
I have mint. Oh, no, you can do a lot of stuff with mint. Uh, a lot of the tools themselves, like shellcode exe.py, that's not going to be included with mint. But if you just literally Google it, oh, wrong window. So if I go like shellcode to exe.py surveys, oh, it's trying to find it down. I'll put it in quotes so that Google doesn't look for a TLD. There you go. So Mario, oh yeah, this dude's awesome. Mario Villas, not Vias, there's only one L there. This dude's got a bunch of really cool stuff. I recall him from doing a lot of shellcode research and he's got shellcode tools over here on GitHub. And one of them is this little booger butt right there. Shellcode to exe.py, convert shellcode into executable files for multiple platforms. So that is included in da, 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 Remnux, the other distro that I'm farting around with, but if you just download it from here, you can do it in Mint. Linux Mint. At one point, Mint had like the largest market share for Linux. Do you remember that? It was, it was a long time ago. It was bigger than Ubuntu, I could swear, for a while. When it was first starting up, yeah. Yeah, right? And Ubuntu just kind of took, took off. Yeah, off. Canonical yeah. Got, got carried away. All right, so personal knowledge. Can I kick it? I'll, I'll copy some of this. The workshop will cover the file for... Okay, the workshop will cover... Debugging shellcode, which requires a modicum. Oh, modicum. That's a cute word. Of programming knowledge and or experience. If you've never analyzed... Uh, no, actually, I'm going to go back and steal it from here. Because a lot of this fits. If you... Our programmer, great. If not, don't worry. If you have worked to deobfuscate code, fantastic. If not, oh, look, I spelled it wrong. Ah, stupid. Meh. Ah, damn it. Boop, boop. Nope. What? I know, Adam. <laughs> this will be an intermediate to advanced workshop in terms of skills required. Even so, I'll work with anyone. Uh gain the most for you, you'll want to make sure that you are somewhat familiar with the following. How the hell did I get this in here? Go away. All right, so essentially, what, here's, here's the deal. When you're working with shell code, you're going to be doing, you're going to be using a debugger. And so I have debugging down here. You're going to be dealing with um, Windows API calls. Virtual machines, oh yeah. Uh, and then hardware is gonna be very, very sim similar. So let's stop scrolling and go right back to this point. All right, cool. So prerequisites. Workshop will cover debugging shellcode, which requires a modicum of programming knowledge or experience. If you're a pro if you are a programmer or have programming experience, great. If not, don't worry. If you overworked to deobfuscate code, fantastic. If not, meh. Overall, this will be an intermediate. Did I just say that? Or did I just read it? Now we're good. Okay. The following. Windows API calls. Um, as we debug our shell code, we'll run into various API calls. Let's see if we can give a... Can I literally just Google that? No. What's this? Ooh, go back to, oh, actually, that one's good, and that one looks good right there. Ugh, that's ugly. I don't want that. Uh, I'll give examples. How about this? If you have seen, um, trying to think of some super common API calls, uh, Create process A for, for example, if you see create process A and have no idea what this is, may run into issues with the workshop. Meanwhile, if you can simply Google Create process A. And find 
you know, the first hit on Google <laughs> to be, yeah, you're golden. So the idea is, you know, if they've never seen a Windows API call, mm -hmm. right? So create process A, a couple of different things, a, a Windows API call that ends in a capital A stands for ASCII. Other times you'll see a W, which stands for wide. Sometimes you'll see an EX, capital E, lowercase x. A is ASCII, wide is Unicode. It means that the uh, arguments and the things that it's going to deal with or enact upon are expected to be in Unicode format versus an ASCII string or whatever, you know, being provided to it. Mm -hmm. um, EX, so I wonder if you can do a quick, like, uh, Microsoft API call. Yeah, it stands for, I think it's extended officially. Oh, here's Stack Exchange. All right. Uh, oh, it sucks. All right, so, like, create file. Create file EX. No, what? Get out of there. Here's an EX. You dirty, dirty. All right, so here's here's A and here's W. Oh, here you go. Create file EX. So EX means it's, it's extended, meaning the original version of the API call in the Microsoft Docs, for example, right? Like, let's say this one right here. Create file. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the arguments that accepts to be pushed onto the stack, and we'll be talking about the stack and all kinds of fun stuff as we go through this for folks who don't have experience like debugging properly in a debugger, right? So they, they're they pushed on in reverse order to the stack, that gets called, they go into the, the frame. Anyway, um, if a function is changed such that it's so radically different from the previous version, and yet they're like, oh, it's, it's still like create file, you know? Instead of naming it just create file A, they'll name it create file EX, and it stands for extended, and they'll still keep create file. So in a program, you might see stuff like this. Like some programs will literally use like, and I don't remember if thread even has an AX, but you might see like create thread A. Or I think it's just create thread, whatever the hell it is. And then later you'll see EX. And if you approach them the exact same while you're debugging it, you're going to fail. Because if you look at the Microsoft docs for what this sucker wants, it wants like derp, perp, and perp. Whereas this one might want like derp, derp two, herp, and burpity. <laughs> I don't know. The idea being is they, they function so different that it's an extended function. So if someone has never, ever had that type of experience, I mean, you know, we could talk to that in the class. That's mm -hmm. kind of one of the things that I'll be talking about. So as we debug our shell code and run the various MS API calls, for example, if you see create process A and have no idea what this is, you may run into issues with the workshop. Meanwhile, if you can simply Google create process A and find, you know, the first hit on Google, you're golden. The idea being that we'll be focusing quite a bit on MS API docs online. Unless you like to use Bing, in which case, don't bother signing up. <laughs> oh, there might be some Microsoft people there. It'll get mad. Yeah. Fine, I'll take that out. Everybody I see the whiskey's treating you well. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> what? Using DuckDuckGo? Yeah. Oh, I'll let you have that. All right, so Windows API calls debugging. Big old bonus if you're already familiar with debugging concepts such as setting breakpoints, stepping through code, etc. For example... What's the difference between step into and step over? We'll be covering these in the workshop, but if you're already familiar, fantastic. If you've never run any bugger, go hit your favorite search engine, DuckDuckGo and blah, blah. You know the drill, I'll be covering, uh, I already said that. And virtual machines. We'll be using VMs to avoid infecting our host machines as we'll be working directly with malicious dot, uh, malicious code. If you've never used a VM before, you're gonna have a bad time. In such case, I recommend checking YouTube or reaching out to me personally for some resources on setting up a VM and a tool like VMware or VirtualBox. Yep. Materials or equipment you'll need. Don't need Acid Burns laptop. Your laptop will probably need at least four gigs of RAM. You'll need to be able to run your host OS. Doesn't matter which. Yeah, we can help no matter 
what you're running along with the Windows 10 V. Oh, ooh, actually, four will not be enough. You're going to probably want eight gigs of RAM. You need to be able to run your host OS in addition to a Windows 10 and an Ubuntu VM. And I'll put here Remnux. See Remnux.org. Please try to have USB port available, USB 3.0 port available. I'll have USB 3.0 drives with me the day of the workshop. These drives will be fat formatted. Oh, they won't. They're going to be X fat formatted, stupid. X fat formatted, nothing fancy, and contain the files required for the workshop. Along with VMs for anyone who doesn't set up prior to class. I hate you. <laughs> People always sign up. They show up. And they're like, were we supposed to prep? I'm like, I sent you so many notes. I hate you. I will also pop the files onto a cloud-based file sharing service. Well, I had a workshop for folks who'd like to set up early. Yep. VM software. You'll need software to run a VM. VMware or VirtualBox. Doesn't matter what. Oh, that's a good point. Acid Burns laptop is not capable of virtualization. Oh, man. 256 <laughs> psychedelic colors, man. Uh, da, 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 da. that's good. If you do not have a Windows 10 malware analysis, oh, here we go. Um, bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Oh, that still applies. Malware analysis, malware analysis VM. Please check out the evaluation center as you can grab a trial of Windows that will work just fine in this workshop. Additionally, you'll want a fresh updated copy of Remnux v6 and Ubuntu distro, which can be found here. And let's give an actual link to that bad boy. Remnux.org distro. Yeah. How do I get an anchor? Come on, bro. For real? Eh, well, there's. Cancer stick. Oh, there's smoker. That's horrible. You shouldn't do that. Don't ever start this. Vaping is a horrible habit. I vaped for like two weeks and all of a sudden I was wearing patches. I was like, dude, <laughs> I can't go without it. I'm not wearing a patch right now. I'm not wearing a patch. Can you tell? <laughs> Leave me alone, Adam. Whenever I watch a streamer and they vape on stream, I'm like, ah, oh, dude, come on. Cut it out. And I just did it. Twice. Twice. All right. Additionally, you want a fresh updated copy of Remnux V6 and Ubuntu distro, which can be found here. Uh, oh, well, I guess I should have this. Oh, yep. Yeah, we don't need MS Office for this one. Python. You want to have Python installed. 2.7x preferred. I may not be able to assist with 3.x. And you're a bad person if you use 3.x. I'll have, it, I'll have an offline installer available should you need it. Make sure you have that USB port available. Writing some Python based scripts for analysis. Along, eh. We're going to change that up. Remnux comes oh remnus comes with python they need it in windows do 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 no they don't um Remnix comes with python installed so you should be good okay skill level target audience would be intermediate to advanced analysts however anyone even a little background in malware analysis should do this fine if otherwise a beginner when it comes to incident response Mm, yeah. Advanced folks who haven't done much. Okay, we got to toss this part right here. That's fine. In the event your talk is not accepted for workshops, would you be would you be consent to having it referred to one of the villages? Sure thing sounds good. I really want to do a workshop. I don't really know how the villages work to be honest. Don't they run workshops inside of the villages? I believe they do. Um it's just 
Essentially, I mean, they're doing it. In th- so DEFCON 27 is going to be in three different hotels this year. And it's going to be in, oh, goodness, the Paris. What, what connects directly to the Paris? I'm blanking. Oh, I know. <laughs> cool. Uh, we can just check. <laughs> Duh. Uh, Par- oh, yeah, Bally's. Paris, Bally's, and they're now extending to Planet Hollywood. Three different hotels. That's ridiculous. They might hit like 30K people this year. That's going to be crazy. Sure thing sounds good. As long as a village is conducive to a four-hour workshop. Yeah. If you need to collect a fee for materials, nope, no fee. I'll have some USB drives to share out VMs for folks who don't set it beforehand. But in general, nothing is needed outside a laptop. And we have our abstract. All right, let's go. Let's pop back up here and think about more. Regards. Let's see, hardware and software. Okay. Um, in your Windows, Windows malware analysis VM, you'll want to have the following installed: X64 DBG. Ooh, what are we going to want in Windows? X64 DBG. Ida Free. See, I don't like Ida Free 7 because it does not include a debugger. So, for example, if we go to... let just type Ida. Does that work? No, that's dumb. Uh, was it Hex... 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 Oh God. Hex, Ida, Hex Rays? Yeah, yeah, Hex Rays. So, Ida... So, Ida 5 Free was available for many, many years. And then they released Ida 7 Free. The evaluation version, I guess we should call it. So Ida 7.0 freeware, but unfortunately they took the debugger and they they nixed it. And it would be very handy to have. And I don't see historical downloads here, but I can provide them. So let's just put a note. Ida free 5.x. As a note, Ida free 7.x removed the Built-in debugger, only available to commercial users. So I will provide 5.x installers if needed. Okay, so uh, Ida, uh, x64, Ida free. What else do we want in Windows? We're in Windows. Let's look. Uh, we're gonna want. We can do technically. We can do Python. So in Remnux, but they're going to have to have shared folders to be able to share the files back and forth. And shared folders are always a demo god issue. Just like when I said I would start this uh, stream about 20 minutes prior than I did because I was having VMware tools issues. So I think I think that's mostly okay. That's mostly what we want. Let's go with that. Let's make sure they know. Well, X32 DBG. All right, cool. All right, let's let's move down for now. Uh, target audience would be intermediate. Oh, I got that. Uh, da, 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 village. Okay, abstract. Summarize, which your training will cover. Okay. So what I want to get across here is that many times analysts, whether it's Security Operations Center, Tier 1, 2, 3, uh, CERT, CE, CI, RT, whatever you want to call it, when they run into shellcode, they'll typically say, like, well, we need to push this out to the malware team, right? So I want to try to give give some ways that they don't have to defer to another team. And so at day job, right, day job, we try to train our SOC to be able to handle everything. You know, something comes in and let's see if it's, you know, Imitet and it has obfuscated VBA, they're able to go in. And that was the previous workshop idea, right? I was going to use Imitet as an example. And, you know, you decode everything and you find the PowerShell and you decode it using, I have write host methods along with DOSfiscation and all kinds of fun stuff that we're going to be using if that one gets accepted. And in this one, what I want to do is like you run across the shell code, say in a carrier file, whatever it is. You're able to do a quick triage using SCDBG, mm-hmm. shellcode debug, 
and which is this little fart right here. So I just downloaded scdbg.zip, which by the way, you can find scdbg, just Google it, and it takes you to RE Corner, which is a phenomenal website. And it does a really quick analysis and a high level overview of shellcode. So it'll tell you like the API calls being used along with the arguments being used within it. And then taking that further into like, all right, well, when shellcode typically initiates, a so we're not gonna talk about return oriented programming. We're not talking about ROP. We're not gonna get into ROP gadgets. That would be an advanced class for darn sure. So we're gonna be talking about, you know, it loads the PEB, the process environment block. And from there it finds kernel 32. And then from there, like we're gonna be going over all those things. If it does a call to lower in the code, and then it does a call to higher in the code. You know, why is it doing that? Well, it's trying to find its place in memory. And that's because of ASLR, address space layout randomization. So in fact, I should go over here and I should add some things in here using the debugger, manual analysis. Um, let's just call it shellcode shenanigans. Is that spelled correctly? Sure. Uh, ROP. Prop will not be covered, but we will be covering. And then we're gonna talk about things like ASLR and DEP. So DEP uh, tries to essentially stop execution from the stack. So as opposed to executing directly from the stack, uh, data execution, is it data execution prevention? Is that what it is? Am I blanking on ASLR, DEP? Da, 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 da. Dep is, yeah, data execution prevention. Okay, cool. So, and then it talks about here, like, oh, to get around that, you have to use ROP. You're like, ah, I don't have, we don't have time for all that. That's not a four hour workshop. So, ROP will let me cover, we'll be covering ASLR and Dep. Potentially some, uh, was it Emmet protections? Uh, now known as. Uh, exploit guard, and so we're gonna be talking about some of those things. They cover some of these types of concepts in one of the SANS trainings. I just, I took it not long ago, actually. I don't remember the training very well. Uh, SEC 599, they talk about some of those things, but essentially, um, yeah, all right, we're good. So ASLR and DEP, shellcode shenanigans. Uh, why might shellcode, okay. What is the PEB? How does shellcode locate kernel32.dll? How does shellcode locate library? Um, uh, API methods Oops. within kernel32.dll. So we'll be talking about all these things. And it's best given with an example, which is coming up shortly here. What time do we start to stream? How long have I been going? That's mm, good. I'll keep going. All right, cool. Oh, someone just asked, oh, my chat's not going over here. Or did I just miss it? Oh, silly me. And links, I don't know. Are they going to links too? Is it links? Link? The link, right? The big old freaking Ferris wheelie thingy looking dangle bobber. Uh, okay, so let's go back over here. All right, abstract. In this workshop, you'll learn about how to debug and understand. Debug and understand? I don't know if I like that. Debug shellcode. Why does shellcode exist? Where might you find shellcode during analysis? Or I should say incident response. Rather than pushing shellcode analysis to a dedicated our analysis team. Now, learn the ins and outs of Mm, I don't know where this everyday incident response awareness efforts. Everyday incident response techniques, techniques as related to mm, that's 
sucks, Adam. Do better. <laughs> uh, in this workshop, you learn about how to debug shell code. Why does shell code exist? Where might you find shell code during an incident response? How can you quickly triage shell code to determine the actions it takes? How can you step through shell code to determine exactly what API calls are used? Make that a question. What? Yeah. Where? Third line. Third line. I did it again. Yeah, trace. Huh, I'm not good at that. Link. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I actually heard that it might have extended to there. That's a good point. Four? Is it, can you consider that a whole hotel? A whole hotel? Uh, we're going to come back to this and say review. Uh, I'll come back to that. So trainer bio. Right. I hate talking about myself in the third person. It's so silly, but Ryan Chapman is an incident response. IR. Oh, analyst with a background in host and network forensic analysis, malware analysis, threat intelligence, and all the other fun facets of the blue, blue team realm. Prior to working in IR, Ryan worked as a technical trainer for many years. Outside of work, Ryan spends time with his family, gets tapped on the jujitsu mats. I haven't been to jujitsu in like six, seven months because I got injured. I'm a chump. I'm going to leave it in though. And plays. Yeah, I got tired of getting tapped. I got hurt. I got it hurts. And plays plenty of Street Fighter. Ha Dukin. Let's do that. <laughs> the geek diver already knows me. Ryan not like talking about himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You got me. Notice he said in the third person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh okay. About me. Okay, so here's the detailed outline. So about me. And then we take all this and we dump it from the previous one. Boop. And we'll take what we have here, dump it in there. So we have some things to deal with. Uh, any supporting files? Mm, so yeah, I'll just leave that listed above. And then we have our submissions and agreements. And then I've already agreed to all these things because of the previous one where I inserted my name. Okay, so we're fleshing this out. Let's close the notes file. And let's pop up back to the top and try to get a little more information. So here's the deal. All right, we're going to close most of this. So I have some shell code examples. Uh, first off, all right, let's get to a little bit of tech without hopefully getting carried away. So I have a virus total, what do they call it now? Enterprise, it used to be called virus total intelligence. I have an account, I have one through day job technically, but the one we're using right now is a personal one. It's actually one that was given to me by, by virus total. I reached out to them and a couple other companies too. It was pretty awesome. And I said, Hey, I'm a researcher and I do like presentations and I, you know, I want to show your tool while being able to utilize it. You know, may I have a free account and they gave me a free account. That's <laughs> pretty awesome. In fact, the exploit kit workshop that I did at B-Slides Las Vegas 2015. Uh, oh, really? What? I didn't know that. What the heck? I wasn't aware of that. Oh. No, I don't know who the Geek Diver is. No. Jazzy told me to follow the person. And I, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, Destruct Icon, sorry. No real names. And so, yeah, I didn't know that there was an association there. That's kind of cool. So VT Enterprise, um, I got a researcher account, and if I go over here and I do something like file type, uh, let's go with document and detections, let's go with like 20 or more, and let's just hit search, which will give me a, a bunch of ridiculous things, and then let me just type shellcode for like comments, and virus object, virus, no, these are boring. Uh, here's a document with 2012 exploit. Let's click on it. What is this? So MO97 shellcode, OLE, CVE. Uh, which C, oh, that's a super common CVE. We used to deal with this all the time. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> Let's look it up. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I recall this. All right, let's see if I can just grab this random file. Oh, damn it. Chrome, stop protecting me. I don't want that. Keep the dangerous file. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, that's zero F. Let's go to downloads, delete whatever the hell that is. All right, zero F, get rid of that. Pop into a hex dump. All right, so this is, can I zoom in in this tool? Not so much, all right. This is a doc file. So it's an OLE, object linking and embedding document. And we have two more, two. Let's see if we can randomly identify the shell code within it. Hello. Uh, you know what? It's probably a damn VBA script. All right. Uh, let's see, I don't have Office on this particular VM. So let's see if I have C, oops, C program, come on, Python through five scripts. Oh, whoop, not in Linux. <laughs> I'm not in Linux, Adam. All right, we got uh, OLE VBA dot EXE. Failed to create process. All right, that's cool. What the hell's that? Oh, I think I downloaded the uh, OLE VBA for, oh, I want OLE VBA three. Nope. All right, cool story. OLE tools. Let's grab OLE dump from Mr. Didier Stevens, another sans professional. Let's actually go to, yeah, there's a newer version than this. So if I go to the link address and I just go to files, I think, no. Maybe software, could I have access to that? Nope. What if I just go to a site and then click my software? There we go. And we want OLE dump, click. Newest version, oh, that's at the bottom. Scroll down. There we go, 009, okay. Click, nope. Click, there we go. All right, show in folder. Let's extract this little sucker right here. I'm just quickly trying to see if I can find some shell code to give examples of what I want to do. So let's go over here. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Ooh, Python 3.5 is on this VM. Ew. Dirty, dirty, dirty. I'm a dirty, dirty person. <laughs> oh no. Get out of here. Can I do Python 2? Oh, that's horrible. What about just Python? Oh no, I don't want that. Damn it. I'm the person I hate. You are. Uh, so this VM has Python 3. I don't recall that being a thing. That's cool. All right, is Python 2 on here? Let's go get Python 2. Download. No. <laughs> no. Uh, look below Python 2. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I want 2.7.15. Yeah, I want that. Click. Windows 64 bit MSI installer. Click, click, click. Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, put it there. Do, 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 do. Ew, ew, no, ah, parenthetical notation for print, that's horrible, <laughs> oh, I hate it, now, normally I use virtual environments, so I'm sure I'm going to screw this all up, but, all right, whatever, um, CDC, no, I just put it in Python 2 stuff, Do the, yeah, uh, Python, all right, cool, exit out that, Python, where did I put the thing old part here? And doop, 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 doop. Holy dump, does that work? Ah, I'm over it. I don't wanna deal with pip. Pip's all piped into Python 3 too. Eh, whatever, all right. I'll come back to that. So, uh, fill that out later. Not on, not on the stream. Yeah, uh, previous workshops. Da, 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 da. Can your class be taught in four hours? All right, here's the first review. How long do you think you need for the workshop? Four hours would be great. Shell code overview. Uh, extracting shell code from a carrier file. Do 0 
0 0.5, uh, 0.5 hours converting between shellcode formats, and then 1.0 hours debugging shell. Hey, help me math. One, 1.5, three, 3.5. All right, we'll call this. Uh, ooh, I know. Uh, da, 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 0 0.5 hours, quick triage of shell code, SC, DBG, AC API calls, etc. And then debugging, and then buffer and potty breaks. Okay. What? 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3. 3. 3. <laughs> well, good, because I wanted more time for that. <laughs> dumb, dumb. All right, and the other view is name your workshop. All right, well, this is important. Down the rabbit hole, debugging, and eh, shell shot. What if I just combine these? What if I say, shell code shocked, debugging, understanding. I still don't think there might be something there. Yeah. Shell code shocked. There might be something there, eh? I like that. Yeah. Good working title. Geek Diver. What do you think? Or some kind of Ninja Turtle reference. Ah, damn it. Keeps coming up with good ideas. Yeah. All right, hold on. Damn it. Shellshock TMNT2 arcade game. There's a Shellshock quote from here. Or is it called Shellshock? What's, what is it? Yeah, it's called Shellshocked. Okay, so Shell... Oh... What are the windows? What are the windows? What are the turtles? Oh, Calabunga. Is that Calabunga? I like this for now. Shell code shock. There might be something there, eh? Yeah, I'm totally stealing your title. Thank you. I appreciate that. If it gets selected, I'll be like the Geek Diver, who apparently I had drinks with one day. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Hey, it's Jay. What's up, Jay? Oh, he's got his real name right there, so I could say his real name. Oh. Yes, there will definitely be a turtle slide. Jay, aren't you supposed to be helping your father move today? What are you doing? <laughs> I was supposed to help his dad move today. And I'm oh, getting over... Oh. Yeah, I thought I was just going to make myself sick again. He said he had additional help, so I was like, all right. And then now Jay's busting me. I was like, oh, Ryan's on the internet. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Jay. <laughs> shut up, Jay. All right. Um, yeah, plenty of turtle slides for sure. Okay, so shell code, modicum of programming knowledge or experience. If you're a programmer, have, uh, if you're, let's just go with if you're a programmer. Great. If not, don't worry. If you've worked in deobfuscate code, fantastic. If not, eh. Overall, this will be an intermediate to advanced workshop in terms of skills required. Cool. Windows API calls. As we debug our shell code, yeah, it's cool. Deb okay, so we now want to know API calls, uh, debug debugging should go. For actually, VMs should go first, and then debugging. And then Windows API calls. And in fact, we're going to even say in order of importance. Like if they don't know how to VM, like we've got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like that's going to be difficult. You just can't debug because you're not going to find the API calls anyway, so they don't matter. Uh, virtual machines debugging Windows API calls running tools all right hardware participate you know you laptop actually you need much better bring a laptop so eight gigs of ram should be fine for remnux windows 10 vm usb 3.0 ports vm software windows 10 malware analysis use the test drive python but remnux comes with it and then you're going to want x64 dbg and ida free i think those are the primary tools we're going to need so what level of skills required for your target? Um, anything else you'll need will be included with Remnux V6. There. Okay, target audience, top talk accepted for workshops, conducive to, yep, 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 a village. What's this? Got a message here. Okay. Abstract. Here we go. In this workshop, let's get rid of review. 
let's kill this thing out. In the workshop, you learn how to, you learn about how to, you learn about how to? No, you'll learn how to debug shellcode. Why does shellcode exist? Where might you find shellcode during incident response? How can you quickly triage shellcode to determine the actions it takes? How can you step through shellcode? Yeah, I called. These questions. Workshop uses a hands-on method to train and was to answer these questions among many more. Stop. Escal Is there a word count on this? Doesn't say one. Meh. Stop escalating to your malware team or third party analysis team. Get and begin digging into your digging into your code yourself. That works right. Stop escalating your malware team or third party analysis team. It doesn't really need a comma there and begin digging into shell code yourself. I like that. I should try to VM at the moment. I just switched into flash drive and oh yeah, you want to VM for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Trainer bio. That's enough of that. Uh, detailed outline. Okay. About me. Obligatory. All about shell codes. What is shell code? Where did the term origin originate? Where might one find shell code? Maldoc analysis, EK. General, hey, what's the CVE? Quick triage, recognizing shellcode, converting between the types. Push shellcode to hex file. Where's the PE part? Where do I get into that? Did I delete that? That's silly. Quick triage, recognizing there's gonna convert between shellcode versions, push shellcode to PE file. Many options. Shellcode to exe dot pi. Uh, there's actually a website. You have to be very careful about opset concerns of the website, but technically, shellcode to exe. If you just Google that, take it to Sansprite, I think it is. Here you go. Ooh. Uh -oh. No. Well, okay. Not that one. Um, okay. Let's just give an example given. How about that? Uh, da, 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 review an SCDPG and directly review a stream dumper. Useful in analyzing PD. Let's go up now like that. Reviewing raw shell code, bin file on IDA, converting. Oh, I already. Oh, there's that. Uh, so let's go like that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually let's put this up there and get out of that. So now what we want to do is give some final examples and then wrap this up, a little bow on it, and talk about some quick shell code here. So let's get this stream done here. We've got uh, from my previous workshop on GitHub, the EK workshop, I have some shell code listed for, I guess Fiesta has more on here. Yeah. So we've got, for example, there's a flash exploit. I don't like that one. I used, no, that's straight. That loads flash files and into the stager. I don't want that. Java, I don't want that. PDF, yeah. So we have some shellcode here. So here's a .txt file for shellcode. Let's open this up with XHD starts out with that. And then we get to the shellcode right here. So here's our NOP sled. Okay, so we want to talk about NOP sled. All right, talk about NOP sled. And then we have our actual, so we're going to save as, save as desktop. Let's just call it shell.bin. Let's get rid of the NOP sled. All right, and then down here, it looks like that's what gets encoded. And then we got a bunch of 90s after that. Is it just all 90s down the, oh, wait a minute. Ooh. Uh, 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 uh. 
uh, 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 uh. yeah, that's good. All right, we're gonna save that as shell.bin, and then we're gonna see if scdbg GUI launcher with find shell code clicked will find it. Where did I say the desktop? Desktop and was it shell that bin? Was that it? And then launch. Da, 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 da. I don't know if it's byte flipped. I assumed it wasn't. Da, da. Oh, there you go. There we go. Oh, hold on. Uh, load library being used with your. Oh, okay. So this is potentially uh, an obfuscation point. So load library A, and then it's actually trying to load URL mon. So this would be part of the workshop, right? So you talk about load library A. So what is load library A? When you want to load a library itself, so you want to actually load up a DLL via kernel 32, you have to invoke load library A. So we go over here and we go like this. Uh, load library A, and then we talk about example, example given, load library A, URL mon. What is URL mon? And then we just go right back to Google, and we just do a URL mon. URL mon is a DLL file that is used typically to invoke things like URL download to file. And so we go like this, and we pop in common example, and then like that little fart right there. Close that, close that. What did I call this file? Uh, Shell.bin. Let me verify what this little sucker is again. It's just the, the raw shell code, right? Okay. So do I, ooh, do I have Ida 5 on this machine? Oh, I bet I don't, because I'm lame. Ooh, I do. I had a five freeware version. Yeah, I agree to that. Sure. New. No, don't do all that. Just open a damn file. Desktop. Shell.bin. Yep. Uh, 632. Yep. Yep. I know. Uh, uh, oh, I meant to hit C. I screwed it up. I meant to hit C. There. Da, 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 da. All right, so this starts out jumping short to a location, and then it jumps to this location. Start by it's gonna test and jump back to there. Oh, it's uh, it's XORing itself. All right, so we take this. Uh, does this one have the debugger installed? You know, I don't want to do it in that one. I want to do it in don't say the database. Okay, so I want to talk about taking. Da, 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 da. We have the shell code. So, okay, let's switch over real quick to Remnux. And then if you do shell code to exe, help gives you a heads up on how this works, right? Shellcode.exe. Give it the binary, it'll create the payload.exe. You can use that website in the past, but apparently not now. <laughs> you provide the architecture and the OS, and I actually have some other videos that I've done in the past. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go back to here. Full screen, Chrome. So on YouTube, it's part of this group called Malwarewolf for a while. It pretty much died. Actually, it died. It died pretty hard. Um, Ryan Chapman J, and then I have a playlist on my page for JavaScript deobfuscation. Oh, and then over here, I talk about how to deobfuscate JavaScript. Here's PDF Stream Dumper, da, 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 da. and then right over. So there's the URL encoded, or excuse me, uh, Unicode encoded shellcode, and I do believe it's actually in video two where we use, oh, I just did the same thing. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's using an older version of Remnex, I think it was four or five. And then we're using a couple different versions or a couple different ways to get the shellcode into file. We're looking at 
Where, where do we do it? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so here's the URL encoded. I think I'm doing some Perl stuff here to clean it up. Yeah, shellcode.txt. So I'm just, for anyone who might actually watch this from the DEF CON crew, I'm just showing some previous work and analysis. So here we go. Here's shellcode.txe. I'll mute myself. <laughs> so anyway, there's also a tool that comes in Remnux called Unicode to Hex Escape. And it is a shell script that will actually take your shell code and format it as such with slash X and then a byte and then slash X and then a byte. And then if you view that, see it's formatted in that fashion. And then you can use shell code to exe dash S the hex version. And then it says, hey, I, I did a thing. And then you get the exe file that it creates. So you can take that exe and then drop it into a debugger. So let's go do that right now. Uh, what format do we have ours in? So that was Unicode. Da, 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 da. ASCII entry in the command line was slash s slash s. I actually have been using a different method for a while that I don't want to... Uh, touch right now, but I do want to see the shell code dot shell code. Boop boo full screen. Oh, do you hear the howl? <laughs> yeah. Are you from that group? Do I know you like intimately? No, right? <laughs> like, who the hell is the geek diver? I want now. I want to know. After this, I'm gonna hit him or her up and be like, "Who are you?" And I'm like, "Oh, so and so." I'm like, "Ah, oh, should have known that." All right. Well, look at your phone. You have baseball coming up? Yeah, what time do you have to go? Oh, we got time. Let's wrap this up. My, my mom's keeping the kiddo for a little bit longer. So uh, we're... Oh, no, Adam. I don't have it on this VM. Uh -oh. oh, are you that dude from Grinder? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we got a reunion. Grinder, right? Yeah. Nah, <laughs> like I don't know. Ah, like I don't know. All right, github.com rj dash chat. Way to docs. Uh oh, someone's home. Uh oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get yelled at. I'm gonna get yelled at. Too late. Hey, Ed. Want to say hi to the internet? She's like, no, no, stupid. All right, which one are we looking at? Angular or Fiesta? Do you remember? I'm looking at Fiesta. All right, cool. Let's grab the Fiesta file here. And I just want, a, so I could submit the workshop as is, but I'm not truly showing them that I even really know how to analyze the shell code. So I want to provide some type of. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, let's do this, whatever. And then take that one guy. Nope. You want to do that? All right, how about that? And go. Go away. All right. It was a PDF. Oh, crap. Where did I put it? Which one was it? Oh, no, Adam. Was this little guy? Open that and set. Yeah, it was that one. Okay, we got to open this and bless. Ah, oh, what? How silly is that? All right, sudo apt get install bless. So bless is a, a fantastic hex editor. It's not fantastic. It's actually very low overhead and non-resource intensive, which is the same thing as very little overhead. It oh, it was fantastic. It's quick and dirty is what it is. O and O editor is the, is the king, but it costs money. So let's open bless and let's look at that. Come here, stop it. And it was one, oh, stop it yourself. Remnox doesn't do the windowing things. I like the windowing things that Ubuntu and Windows do. Dun, 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 dun. All right. This little sucker over here, and we're gonna take it right up to right there. Go away, and we're gonna save as uh, I don't know shell.bin, and we'll put it in the Remnux folder. Save it. All right, so we got shell.bin in here, and then we go. I mean, technically, can you copy as hex from this tool? Uh, this tool's kind of weak in that regard. I'm not sure it works that way. 
Uh, oh, well, that works. That works. That works. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, in that case, let me just grab down to do 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 to right there. If I can copy like that. Did I close it? I did. Go back to site. And how do you replace in here? What did I just do? Do 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 do. Replace, replace, replace. Replace space. Replace all. All right, so we have our raw hex here, right? Mm -hmm. So then I can take this and hopefully it's copying and pasting on the machine. Hey, come here. Hey, we, oh, I clicked too much. Yes, you did. Don't click too much. Calm, calm down. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Open a new one. Okay, open that up. And let's paste on this. That. All right, cool. Where are we? We're in the home directory. Oop, screwed that up. Yeah. Yup. All right, echo to, uh, let's just call it shell.hex. All right, and then less shell. Oops. Hey. Dot hex. All right, so we have the, and then what the hell was the name of the tool? Hex dump. No. Do, 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 do. Dude, I already forgot the name of the damn tool I used to use. I literally just showed the tool being used, and then I forgot what it was called. I'm like, let me go back to my video. <laughs> when I remembered how to do it this way, I should just do it the way I do it normally. Oh, here's the website when it was working. There's Sansprite. Of course, you got to worry about OPSEC, like I said. Unicode to... Ah, oh, that was it. Well, that's Unicode. That's actually not what we're even doing here, so let's just do it a different way. Let's go, uh, where did I put it? What? Oh, I opened Slack. Huh, that's weird. Didn't mean to do that at all. All right, back there. And there we go. All right, so cat shell dot hex. All right, let's just do this. Uh, Perl PE uh, globally replace. And we're going to take every two characters. Uh, da, 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 like this, and we're gonna replace it with that, or with slash x, and then like that. Uh, oop, probably gave it a file would be useful. All right, there we go. And we're gonna call that shell dot uh, h. Oh. Sure, and then shell code. Oop, shell code to exe. I already forgot how to use it. <laughs> I already forgot how to use that. Uh, we want shell code to exe s. And then the file, I technically I could specify the architecture. I don't think I need to. Did I just do a cat last time? Pretty sure I just did. I'm almost skipping through my own video. How, how do I do that again? <laughs> Stupid. Uh, yeah, just S. I know, right? You're like, here, just watch this. <laughs> I remembered it better over here. Just watch it over here. All right, S, and then what did I call the most recent one that I just did? Uh, shell.h. All right, writing shell.exe, and then we do xxd shell.exe, pipe that to less. All right, we got our name Z, and let's try that. All right, oh, damn it. Uh, Adam. My shared folders aren't working. Uh, no. It's no. No, that's ignorant. Oh no, Adam. Oh no, everyone. <laughs> so I got my PE file that I want to go pop into a Windows debugger now. And then my silly butt forgot that my shared folders aren't working on here right now. Because why would they? Demo Gods, the Geek Diver. Right back to Demo Gods. I'm checking my options right now. One sec. Shared folders enabled. Damn it, Adam. All right. I'll, uh, this stream's running long. I should have fixed this before. Damn it. Cache search open VM. Open VM. And there's two of them that I want. I want open VMware tools and open VMware tools desktop. Let's see if this works. Open VM tools and open VM tools desktop. What? 
Oh. Ha. There. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Well. <laughs> Damn it, Ryan. All right. <laughs> right. Well, never mind. Well, I was going to show in here. I mean, pull the damn PE into a Windows debugger. So I tell you what, I think I've already done that, actually. Show video? No, like literally right here in this damn thing. Look, if I go over here to Fiesta, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. So yeah, I've got Fiesta shell code underscore exe. <laughs> okay, that's super handy. I already did this. <laughs> so all I would have had to do was just copy the file from Linux to my host and then to Windows. But apparently I'm inept at running VMware tools. And I think that Anyone who's ever presented knows the same. Yes, see, Geek Diver? Yeah, I'm telling you, it happens to freaking everyone. All right, so let's take a quick analysis here. Take a quick analysis? That sounds weird, but that's all right. Did I ever get X32 debug on here? You can do a quick analysis. Did I not download it yet? I thought I did. X32? Yeah. Uh, Didn't I do the whole thing? You did X64, right? No, you were messing with the remnant. I did all this. Oh, I know. Maybe it's just not loaded. It's it's in here. Did you download and install? I may have, Adam. Let's get it again. <laughs> Stupid. Just to show these guys. What we're just doing. so that they know what I know what I'm doing. Like Forty five minutes between talks. They're like, if we choose him for this talk, he gets no whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> no whiskey at all for this guy. All right, hold on. Hey, Zeuser, what's up, buddy? All right, show in folder. Where'd you go? No, nope. oh, it's snapshot. All right. Do 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 do. All right, release and thirty two x thirty two debug. We open this little guy right there, and let's just take the exe and drop it. All right. So. When this, ah, oh, damn it, hold on. View, uh, where is it? Options, I think it's appearance, and then font, and it's, ah, oh, it's one of these damn things. Da, 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 da. Application font? Can I just make it bigger like that? Does that work? Ah, too easy, huh? I can't zoom in easily? Ah, ah. All right, appearance, font. Tables, disassembly, yeah, disassembly, yeah, yeah. 16. Save, there we go. All right, so when the shell code pops up, you'll notice that it starts off with the EB07. And by the way, we're gonna talk about register. Oh, okay, well, get to it, right? So manual analysis, uh, debugger review, registers, uh, EAX through EDX. Talking about the registers, what they are, flags, why they're important, uh, talk about setting breakpoints with F2, classic. Instead of breakpoint where I currently am, it turns this little sucker right here, was that red? <laughs> I'm colorblind, I don't know what that is. Red. All right, so we got, uh, anyways, it's gonna jump down further in this little sucker, and you'll notice it has, is this a red line right there? Okay, so if I, and we're gonna be talking about the debug menu, so let's say, uh, Debug menu, step into, step over, run until X, things like that. And if I hit uh, da, 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 F7, I hit my breakpoint, F7 again. Now it jumps down further into the code. It's gonna move some bullshit into here, but then you'll notice it's gonna jump back up. And the reason it's doing this is that if you look right here, <clears throat> oh, hold on, where did I just stop? No, I'm an empty DLL. I don't want empty DLL. I have it breaking early. You bastard. There we go. All right, here's the, the Fiesta code, excuse me. So EB11 are the first opcodes we see. So then we're gonna have to talk about opcodes, right? So you say X32 opcodes and coder32. This is, I actually have this printed out. I purchased it from this person whose name I already forgot. So we're gonna talk about opcodes. This is the fun part, should have streamed this. Opcodes, what are they? And so 
Mm -mm. Shell code begins with, and it's EB11. So if I look up EB over here, right? I go EB. Uh, that's not what I want. Okay, that way sucks. Let's do it the right way. EB, boop. EB is a jump. So the op code, the operation code for EB is a jump. And then when you specify 11 after it, like, what does that mean? Why is it doing that, right? So if I hit F7, it's gonna jump down further in the code. So you noticed it jumped down to 401013, which is the line that we're on now. So we're gonna talk about offsets. So we're gonna talk about offsets. What are offsets? All right, so we jump down to, am I still streaming? We're good here? Okay. Mm -hmm. You jump down to this, but then you're gonna call right back up to the line directly underneath the line where we made the jump. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose of that? Well, when we hit F7, if you look down here on the stack, and I know it's not zoomed in very well, but I need to end this damn stream. So <laughs> I've been going too long here. So we now see this memory address is pushed onto the stack, and that's because whenever you do a call, it actually does very specific things. One of the things that it does is it pushes the address space that it's coming from so that it can be re referred to as the return point, the RET, and it pushes it onto the stack, and that's how the shell code is able to then identify where it is in memory. You'll notice the next thing it's gonna do, right? So we jump down, and then we call right back up to the next line, but then we do a pop. And when we do a pop, you now see that the EAX register has the address where we currently are in memory. And that's one of the ways it tries to get around ASLR, address space layout randomization. Right now, we're currently in a standard memory space, 401000. And we're going to talk about how in a 32-bit architecture, every process thinks it has four gigabytes of memory, even though it doesn't technically. So ASLR bypass method from shellcode. Where did I learn all this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, about five years ago, I took the SANS 610 for Forensic 610. I'm looking at my wall for the thing. What, what date is that? 2014 September looks like. Which one? Right there, the bottom one. Reverse engineering. But prior to that, I actually worked with a fella. I don't, I don't know if I should say his name right now. Or named, I'm a name drop the fool. But it, we had some folks at day job who outside of work would kind of mentor me on, on some of this stuff. And so I picked up on how to move through shell code before I took the SANS course. So when I took the SANS course, it was really easy to understand. I was like, oh yeah, I've done this before. And I felt all special. So um, why jump to lower in the code, then call right where we left off? Identifying address, uh, no, identifying self in memory space. ASLR, i.e. getting around ASLR. Hi, I'm glad you saw me streaming too. <laughs> so we're almost done with this one. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just absolutely overwhelming for folks to learn this type of stuff. So here's the thing I would love to do where I just talk about like, oh, here's shell code and I'm just gonna jump through it and do like this whole, you know, three, four hour workshop. The whole point of this particular stream is just me filling out a workshop for DEF CON. So even right now, I'm going a little too far, but I'm just maybe on the off chance that one of the DEF CON uh, CFP board folks are like watching this and they're thinking, does this fool even know how to do it? Yeah, no, I totally do. See, look. <laughs> so I'll show you right now what this shell code's about to do. It's gonna do something really, really cool. It's gonna move, and if I highlight this line right here, it's gonna move the value 575 to the register ECX. So the ECX, originally just the CX, but then the extended CX is typically used for counting. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna loop through 575 times, technically 575 hexadecimal, by the way. So not 575. And it's going to, so when I move it, I go over here to ECX and you'll now notice the value is 575. So if I can go over here, let's see if I can quickly do the, there's so much, it's like, why can't I just do one damn font size? Registers. Oh, damn dogs. There we go. I think someone's home, yeah. So 575, it's gonna decrement 575. So when I hit F7, which is step into, it's gonna go down to 574. And then it's gonna XOR. So the shell code is hiding itself. It has a little bit of snippet at the top that says, this is what I'm gonna do to deobfuscate the rest of myself. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna loop 575 times in hex, that is. 
and it's going to XOR each byte by the value of 1F. So if, and you'll notice it's actually doing it. So the way you read this and the stuff will go over in the, in the workshop is you're XORing the byte at the pointer to the data segment EAX plus ECX, which means if you go to EAX, I can right click and I can go to follow and dump down to dump one. And then I go down here and then it's doing however, plus ECX. So I can actually go down to follow and dump address EAX plus ECX. So right now the value here is one F. Ah, oh, damn it! I got there's too many. Why? Just give me one font size, dude. Hex dump. Let's go to sixteen. Also, there you go. So you'll see the value down here is one F, right? But I'm gonna XOR that by one F. When you XOR a value by itself, the answer is zero. Yeah. So if I hit F7, now the value in that memory space is zero. It's then going to test ECX by ECX. That basically is looking to see if ECX is now zero. It's not, it's 574. So we're gonna test the equal flag and it's gonna go jump not equal right back up to the top. Why? Because we still have to go through this 574 times in hex. So we're gonna decrement, we're gonna XOR. You notice the next value, we're gonna test it. And we're gonna keep going and keep going. So it's XORing its own value. And if I keep stepping through it, you'll see it's reverse XORing itself. So right now this value is 2F, and when I step past it, now it's 30. This value is 2D, when I step past it, it's 32. So eventually, when this is done, I'm gonna land here. So one of the ways that I can, what, what I can do here is I can hit F2 on the instruction that will follow after the loop is done. And then I can go over here to debug and I can say run. And when I do that, what it's just done is it's finished all the XORing. So all the different XORing that it does, now we actually have additional code. And you'll see in here, now we have stuff like command.exe. And apparently, there we go, notepad.exe. And hey, look at this, here's the actual callout. So we've just identified the callout already by allowing the code to deobfuscate itself by skipping over that 575 in hex uh, loops that it did. So this shell code is going to try to call out to HTTP, colon whack whack just tattoo shop dot in so the uh india uh what is it called ctld country level tld and then slash this big old ur uri essentially url so we've identified that if i hit f7 past that it's going to then jump to a different place in the code and then it's going to call some other stuff in the code and at this point i need to kind of pull it back but the whole idea is that as we get into this workshop this is what we're going to be covering you know, how do you let the shellcode XOR itself or roll itself or do whatever it's going to do? And then for that matter, how do you continually analyze going forward? Like how now, how now, brown cow? Oh, I hit you with that one, son. <laughs> so at this point now, how is this shellcode going to actually execute in order, or how, what calls is it going to use? Hi, come here. What? Come here. What? Over more. Say hi. Hi. You're on the internet. Okay. Mwah. That's Allie. We're going over shellcode. All right, so in here, we're gonna say getting around ASLR, and then we're gonna talk about uh, manual analysis, and I guess we go over there. Manual analysis, and boom, opcodes, what are they? Hi, what are you doing now? Oh, you're watching that? That's you. What? That's you, see the little girl right there? <laughs> That's you. See, there's real time right there. And then there's future, or hold on. Oh. Watch, wait, wait, wait. Look over there. Damn it, child, look over there. Now what, oh, there's you going, oh. All right, so then we need to talk about uh, looping, identifying loops, detecting XOR, roll, right, road, uh, Shift right. Okay. You already have. Yeah. Close the unit. They've already been in. She totally thinks my job is boring. Yeah. Allie, is my job boring? No. Aww. Hey, you booger butt. That's the booger. She's the booger. I'm not a booger. You're the booger butt. No, I'm not. You're the booger butt.
If I'm the booger butt, that means you're the big. That means you're the jumbo booger. Butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, jumbo booger butt. About to sign off here. When I tell my mom I'm streaming, that's my mom over there, everyone. When I tell her I'm streaming, she never, she's always like, where's the toilet paper? <laughs> I'm like, shh. I'm almost done here. <laughs> All right. So I think it's enough of that. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, but... Enough of that. Okay. All right, stream. We're going to just submit this now. Stop so, my butt. Allie, <laughs> come on, man. This kept on licking my butt. Shh, Allie, calm down. Yeah. We're trying to be professional here, okay? You're never professional. Hey, shut the hell up. <laughs> so in here, we're going to call this uh, DEF CON 27 Workshop yeah. Submission Alex. Alternate. And on another screen, I'm going to copy all this information, and I'm going to paste it into an email. I'm going to actually fill out my email address and phone number over here where you can't see it. And I'm gonna say my email is blah, 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 blah. And my shut phone number, phone. it's shut up Adam. And it's blah, 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 blah. And you think that's enough? That's enough, right? Plus a two hour stream. They're like, dude, shut up already. Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click send. Click. <gasps> it's sent. Yay. All right, so we have two different workshops submitted to DEF CON. I got this guy, close that guy. Yeah. And again, at so, hold on, sweetheart. At no, some, all right, said hold on, what's that, a no. dog? No. Oh, that's all right, bad, okay. So at some point, I would love to do a stream where I just talk about this general thing. If the workshop is denied, for example, then I'll probably just do that. If it's accepted, though, then awesome. Uh, would love the opportunity, yada, 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 yada. Close that out. Close that out. Close that out. Adam, anything we got left? No. No? I think we're done, I think we're done too. Yep. Okay. Well, for anyone who hang out, hang did, did, did out with us, anyone who hung out with us, we appreciate it. And I'll be trying to do the stream thing like Saturdays. Saturdays, well, yeah. Yeah. Saturdays 11, 12, 1 o'clock, something like that, Arizona time. Yay, blue team. Get it, girl. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for now. Okay, bye.